Good morning, everyone. Today is May 1st. Got a very exciting episode today for you. I think this is a very super important topic as well. I'm going to be talking about price predictions for Bitcoin from different analysts and people in the crypto space, as well as certain metrics you can look at for when to sell Bitcoin, possibly based on historical movements, various on-chain indicators, and just these different uh, metrics that they use. And we'll talk about Bitcoin's price, of course, Bitcoin dominance, altcoins, as well as Ethereum. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first video is from a Bitcoiner named Eric Voorhees. Um, he started a crypto company called Shapeshift. And here's his thoughts on the cycle and his price prediction. $150,000 is definitely a possibility. Even Eric Voorhees, an early crypto pioneer, thinks so as well. In fact, let's take a look what exactly he has to say. So where does Bitcoin go um, in the next year? What, you know, because if I'm going to sell some, I like to sell it when it's at high, and I'd like to buy some <laughs> sure. more when it drops down. Sure, so yeah. you know this business better than any individual I know, next to my mother. And I want to know, where do you think it's going? Right now, it's at about $58,000, which I didn't think it would hit that big that soon. I I'm not surprised by it. I will paint a example of the past time in Bitcoin, right? So when I got involved in Bitcoin, it was $5. And it was in the midst of its first bubble, which ended up at $31. People who were trying to time the market, right? They would have been like, uh, I don't know if $5 is worth it because it was just 50 cents like a year ago. Um, I don't know if $15 is worth it. I don't know if $30 is worth it. And then it crashes down to like 10. And they're like, ah, I knew it. I shouldn't have bought. Now it's only $10 and I almost paid 15. I'm so smart, right? Then they ignore it. They could have got it at any of those prices. And today it would be worth $58,000 a coin. The, the mindset of like long-term thinking is really important here. If you're trying to trade it and play the market and make a bunch of money six months from now, you're probably going to get hosed by more professional traders that are much better than you. But if you own some Bitcoin over many years, you own a piece of what is only 21 million pieces. You own a piece of that that can never be taken away from you. And if you think... So that's something super important that he highlighted, having a long-term time horizon and just dollar cost averaging into this asset because... At the end of the day, we don't necessarily know what price is going to do. No one knows. That sound money is an important tool for humanity, and you own one fraction of the 21, millionth, 21 million units of that technology. You can understand why it would appreciate over time, right? And so get out of your head about trying to trade it or time it or like, is this price too much and that price okay? Just acquire some if you're interested in it. Dollar cost average in if you want. Um, don't try to trade it. Don't freak out when it falls 20 or 30% because it will. It could fall 80%. I've dealt with 95% drawdowns in my time. But at the same time, it has been the greatest investment humanity has ever seen. And it's not random. It's because it is the most important financial technology ever invented. So people should learn about it. They should acquire a little bit of it. Never put your life savings into it and just appreciate that it's volatile. And with that, yeah, go get some. That didn't answer my question at all. So let me try this again. You so, want the price prediction. I, what, give me a price prediction because everybody watching this is going to want a price prediction. So at the yeah. end of 2021, will it be higher or lower than it is now? Are we in a bubble now? We're not in a bubble yet, but we will be, and we will be within 12 months, right? So that's a little bit of a estimate. Um, so he says 12 months, right? This video came out on April 24th, so keep that as your time horizon. We still got possibly a year left in this. I think this Bitcoin goes through cycles, multi-year cycles, each one ending up higher than the last one ended. It, it goes higher, and then it slams down. But it's st when it slams down that floor, it's still considerably higher than the It doesn't just floor. slam down, but it also it fades over several yeah. months in a year, right? So it goes through these seasonal cycles. Um, I think this cycle takes Bitcoin somewhere between 100K and $500,000, right? Why, that's a in, wide in range. This, in this? In this cycle, meaning within... A year? Within six to 18 months, somewhere between 100 and 500,000 will be the top. After the top, it will crash. And it will crash down and it will lose 10, 20, 50% of its price. But where does it end up in the next trough, right? Does it, does it bottom out back at 50K, 20K? Probably not. Probably bottoms out like 80K, 150K, something like that. And there's no way to predict it. So don't try. Just acquire some and make a promise to yourself that you won't do anything with it for five years. And then five years later, see what happened. If somebody has $58,000 right now. So this price prediction was 100 to 500K in the next six to 12 months. 
and every time Bitcoin drops after its peak, um, it normally is at a higher level to this previous peak. So he's saying about maybe 80 to 100K will be the next bottom after this cycle. Um, is now a good time to buy Bitcoin or should they wait until the next dip? You shouldn't, you shouldn't wait. Don't wait. You shouldn't wait. Yeah. If you, and if you're really worried that maybe we're in the peak of a bubble right now and you have $58,000 to spend, spend half of it. Go buy half the Bitcoin that you're going to buy, right? If you're that worried. But just realize that nobody knows, myself included, what the price will be tomorrow or next year or five years from now. If you're trying to time the market, you're going to ruin your life. Eric, where he... All right. So he highlighted having a long time horizon, like five years or longer and not going all in at once, just averaging in with whatever money you're willing to put in. Of course, this is all just his opinion, his point of view, and none of this is financial advice for educational purposes only. And here is a, another post for Max Kaiser. Um, he was a previous news reporter. Um, he's big in the crypto space as well. Here's his price prediction. Something all right. here. All right, let's get to the moment the people have waited patiently for, including... Oh, and this video is from... January 5th, and he previously called in 2020 for it to hit like 20K. Myself, I do not know your forecast yet. I'm gonna learn it for the first time right now. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Max Kaiser's 2021 Bitcoin forecast, you're hearing it for the first time here, folks. I'm going with $220,000 for Bitcoin as a 2021 target. And that would bring us up to over $4 trillion market valuation, which I think is where is a good 2021 uh, objective. You know, we, we were going to catch up to gold. That would bring us up to not quite half gold's valuation, but getting close. Okay, so like we talked about in a previous video about market caps, um, he's saying for Bitcoin to be a $4 trillion market cap. Let's look at what the market cap is right now. We're just at about one trillion right now so four times from this price so four times let's say 60k about 240k is about where his target was right and then he's comparing it to the market cap of gold gold market cap gold's market cap is about 11 trillion so he's saying for it to be four trillion a little less than half the market cap of gold and if like we talked about in a previous video if the the better technology um, comes around normally it supersedes the previous invention like how um, dvds overtook vhs we can compare that to bitcoin and gold so it should actually exceed this one day maybe not this cycle close to gold's valuation i think the catalyst is going to be as i said a major central bank failing Plus, the money printing is uh, is going to go absolutely Weimar Republic. So we're going to see that, depending on how you uh, calculate this, the ten to fifteen trillion that was printed in the last. So two hundred twenty thousand per Bitcoin. When you come up with these forecasts, like I said two years ago, you accurately predicted the twenty twenty forecast. How do you come up with these numbers? Are you sitting at the table with a calculator? Are you, you know, baking your cheesecake and it comes to you? Like, how do you get to that number? Yeah, I like the image of me baking a keto cheesecake and, and thinking about all these things. Um, it, well, first of all, some of it's proprietary. You know, I can't go into the minutia because, you know, this is the secret sauce of my whole enterprise. I don't okay. want to be too specific. But having said that, you know, there's certain um, trends uh, that you can in, in put into your calculation. So we, we just had a halving, right? We had the third halving in Bitcoin. You know, there's two things. In, there's three things in Bitcoin that people like Noriel Rubini never mentioned. The halvings, the difficulty adjustment, and the hash rate. Now, that would be like me being a real estate um, broker and trying to sell real estate and telling people that I don't know where the house is, I don't know how big the house is, and I don't know who owns the house. Would you be a successful real estate broker? No. So Nuriel Rubini never mentions the halving, the hash rate, or the difficulty adjustment. And, and, and he pretends to come across as, as somebody whose opinions we should have some respect for when clearly he's a propagandist NYU. So like he talked about the Bitcoin halving we talked about previously, we can talk about the Bitcoin hash rate. 
So this is the number of transactions that Bitcoin um, does in a day. And you can see, look at this chart for all time. It has just been increasing. So the hash rate is increasing, which further secures the network of Bitcoin. And then the, you talk about the difficulty adjustment. See, I don't even know what this is really. Okay, so the Bitcoin network is programmed to adjust its difficulty every two weeks to ensure a stable rate for blocks. So these are important things to know, like technical things to know about Bitcoin. All right, and then the last prediction will be from Bitcoin Zay, which we talked about before. It's Bitcoin, and mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people, uh, that's invaluable. There is no price point on that. There, uh, Bitcoin's price has no top because fiat currency has no bottom. Mm. So, man, so I got, I, I got, man, I got a bunch of stuff that, that you said I want to touch on. So, like, what do, do you think there will be like another? Like we talked about before too, um, consistent um, money printing from the government is fueling the rise of crypto, commodities, lumber, equities, real estate, everything. Dip that happens this year, where it, where it might hit like another go back to what 40,000, 30,000, or something like that. Um, if I had to give a timeline of what I think will happen this year, right now we just passed an all time high. I think the FOMO will push us to about 75, and uh, I think that'll happen. Before so he's saying 75, right? And this is back in March for the end of this month, uh, and because tax season right before april 15th a lot mm. of people li liquidate uh their bitcoin in order to pay taxes or uh, capital gains or whatever they liquidate it you're going to have a sell-off at some point i think the end of march beginning of april you'll see a sell-off maybe down to the 55 60 range which we're there now so it's not even right. a big deal um and then i think we'll have some sideways movement based on the, that dip because it'll be accumulation from large companies and i think people who are in altcoins will have a huge alt season between April and June, you'll see a lot of altcoins take off because that liquidity, when people are selling, they're not necessarily selling it back in the USD. They're turning it into some altcoin, some right, exactly. you know, whatever. Um, so that's what will happen, I think, between April and June. Uh, July and August, usually, uh, we actually have a spike in investment uh, in Bitcoin. We always see it because most people are on vacation. They're with their family. They're not paying attention to the market. They sleep. And then all of a sudden, you see the price running again. And people are like, oh, my God, it's still happening. You know, whatever. I think that's when we hit 100K. And then in quarter four, traditionally, a lot of people like to uh, invest so that they can reduce their tax burden. All right. So all these Wall Street guys that get these bonuses in early December, all these investment people that get their bonuses, they're trying to they look at their tax burden is like, damn, it's 50,000. All right, let me buy 50,000 worth of Bitcoin tax burden gone. That's why I think quarter four, we'll see that hyper Bitcoinization event to maybe 200 or so thousand. And uh, in between, you will have dips. But remember, from from two. You see his eyes on the right side. He was surprised by that. 2017, on the way from 3,000 to 20,000, we had no less than six dips that were 30%. Mm. And we still went from three to 20,000 in six months. So again, it's not as if this is something like this. I'm just pulling out of my ass like, oh man, this is no, crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is this is usually the roadmap when the, when the bull market starts. And the good thing is, um, as far as bear markets go, I don't think we're going to have three-year bear markets anymore. We have, really? we have billionaires who are looking at this as a way to save their money long-term they're not going to let themselves get wiped out 80%. I can tell you that right now. Any dip that happens is going to be a, a wick. <laughs> this is literally going to get bought up as soon as it starts going down. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Michael Saylor, billionaire. He buys, he's, he's, they, people know him. Uh, he owns MicroStrategy. Uh, he's bought about uh, three, mil, 3 billion worth of Bitcoin, which is worth almost 6 billion now. Um, he buys every dip. Every single time the price dips, Michael Saylor buys 15 million more. Michael Saylor buys 100 million more. <laughs> mm. Times that by 1,000. Times that by 10,000. That's what's going to happen. There's not going to be too many more. Oh, yeah, we got three years to accumulate. That time was dead. And I, I'm glad people uh, got to hear me in 2019 because that was one of the lowest price points. Like you said, what was it then? Uh, it was, it was uh, at the time, we, you know, the time we dropped it, it was around 11,000. 11,000, right? Yeah. yeah. So those, day, those days are gone. Um, and I'm glad some people were able to buy it at that time. So, All right. So Bitcoin Zay, his prediction is around 200K sometime end of 2021. And he believes there's not going to be a major crash like 80 percent that we historically have due to the institutional buyers and people seeing this as a valuable asset class all right so so we got 100 to 500k 
from Eric Voorhees. We got 228K from Max Kaiser and about 200K from Bitcoin Zay, right? And I want to highlight this last video from Data Dash. This is actually a really important topic too, kind of a good segue about a crypto exit strategy to be in tune and to the importance of taking profits as well. The time frame, it is best not to get caught back in just because you love something, but to make sure you get it at a historically favorable discount. And I can list some examples. With Bitcoin, it's tended to be that most full bear market corrections from top to bottom go down about 80%. There's a ton of data science models, um, You know, whether it be, for example, the two-year uh, MA uh, multiplier in this case, uh, the stock to flow, etc. There is a whole range of data science models you can utilize to figure out where we are in the cycle and if you're getting that optimal. The two-year MA multiplier and stock to flow is what we'll be discussing later on for when to sell as well. We'll get into that later. Discount, right? And we can do a video if you guys would like me to kind of dive through some of those data science models. In another video, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and move into our next point here. So signs that it may be time to take profits. These are the broad overarching points that I think are very important to keep in mind. Okay, and they're actually very simple things, right? Again, I'm, I'm a very kind of street smarts kind of person. At the end of the day, guys, I'm, I'm not book smart in a lot of areas. There's some areas I wish I could excel better in. But there's a lot of key things that you can just observe in markets as they're very psychological that will help you in understanding where we are within a given cycle and whether or not it's time to take a step back. So let's go ahead and talk about these. And they really honestly apply to a variety of markets in the world. This can apply to equities or, or stocks generally in this case as well. So first off is making life-changing returns. You know, if you were lucky enough to get into a market like crypto back in March of 2020 to June of 2020, right, you got Bitcoin below 10K in this case, and now you've made a 5X return, or maybe for example, um, you know, for you in this case, well, it might be that a 2X return can be considered life-changing. It could mean that you could put a down payment on your house. Uh, you could have paid off your student loans, you know, debt that would be crippling for most people in this case. Or you've made seismic returns in Bitcoin or altcoins that's up 10, 50X, et cetera, right? greater or less than these values that I put here, right? It doesn't really matter what the percentage is. If it's life-changing to you in this case, there's two points to consider. Not only that, you should probably take some off the table if you have debt or other expenditures or have something that you've really, really wanted throughout your life. And I, I say that as a non-materialistic person, as someone who's quite frugal when it comes to my money, not in the sense of spending on others or doing other things like that, but really just, I always ask, you know, do I really need something, right? But if I had debts and I had other obligations in this case that I needed to pay down, I would certainly sell some of my crypto to get rid of that. You want to live debt free, live free of that stress. It is so uh, difficult to put a price tag on that. It, it's completely immeasurable just how important it is to remove obligations and things of that sort within finance. And it's financial literacy 101 to pay down debts in this case, right? So, so super important right there. So don't get greedy. Make sure you always take profits if you have debts like a mortgage or student loans or you want to help out your family, your parents, whatnot. Something that you really want, that you wanted your whole life, go ahead, shoot yourself. Um, gotta take some gains in this market as well. Again, taking some profits off the table might not be a bad idea at life changer trends. Doesn't mean you have to sell all of it, and it can be in this case you just sell a portion, or you at least have a plan to do so in the near future, right? Next up here is parabolic price action. So I just want to go ahead and I'll bring up an actual example here when we take a look at the, the Bitcoin chart here. And this kind of showcases a point that I brought up earlier about the uh, corrections that we saw, right? But even though the corrections in Bitcoin can be quite brutal, we also have these periods of time where from the bottom to the top, we have absolutely crazy rallies. And you can see here that even as we look at the logarithmic chart, which again is going to, bear in mind, it's going to showcase uh, things in a less kind of parabolic nature as it's showcasing the actual percentage-based growth here versus um, just showcasing obviously the greatest uh, you know, numeric increase in value, making the rest of history kind of unreadable here, right? We can still see here that momentum builds up in the later phases of the cycle, right? Things start to go even more vertical towards the end of it, right? Not just in the actual dollar increase, but actually in percentage as well. Right. And we can see here we can turn on the percentages here right, and see just how crazy crypto can return here in the long run. Right? So again, it's important to note that the more and more euphoric and parabolic we get, and when you start to see stagnation in that parabolic action, right, and we're looking at the monthly chart here, so each of these candles represent a month, we can see here that you know it's not a matter of just timing the top. It's knowing that when there's a very clear sign here on the chart that that momentum is starting to stagnate. Right? And knowing when to take your cards off the table, cash in your chips at the casino, and walk away from the table. Right. I don't mean to you know, just label crypto as a casino in this case. My point here is very clear. When you're going into a market, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. Right. And that's a very important thing to know when to step away. When you know that you were on the right side of history and you've been able to materialize the vast majority of this run up. It's not about timing the absolute top. So 
And this kind of plays in here as well. When everyone wants to buy into, um, uh, who wants to buy in, who previously ignored the asset, right? So when all your your family and relatives and friends uh, and peers that you know about, maybe your old classmates in this case, who, who never really talked to you, but now want to get your investment advice, been there on that one. Um, <laughs> you know, basically, if, if people are reaching out to you about crypto, who previously never chatted to you about crypto, or maybe you tried to tell them about it before, and now they're really eager to get in on it, it's probably a good sign to step away a little bit, start setting your game plan to get out, right? And I'm not saying you can't help them set their coin base, but probably you know do the right thing and say, hey, you're probably coming in in a later half here, right? I've had to do that for a couple of people and unfortunately they don't listen, right? And you can't help that, that's their decisions, right? But you can at least use them as a gauge in this case, you know, you just have to, right? use them as a gauge to understand that, you know, you know, retail, the everyday individuals in this case, tend to get them at the top. I try to scream to the roof. So true, like what we've heard about Dogecoin over the past few months, right? People who ignore it just see the quick gains and they want to get into it fast without understanding anything about the asset. Your friend from high school or your barber or whatever is talking about Dogecoin, that's probably a signal that you don't want to get in. Or it's time to start looking about taking some profits off the table. So always think about that whenever we're talking about crypto, we're talking about stocks. If somebody that you know doesn't really know the space or is a true like trader or investor talking about it, it may be time to start being a little more cautious. Of the time in the market when it's more optimal, look at the data science or the models. But again, I can't provide financial advice. And even if I could, not everyone's going to listen to me. All right. Anyways, next up here is signs and methods for re-entry. So we talked about building a re-entry plan here. Well, what are some things we should keep in mind? Well, you guys might have noticed earlier, I mentioned the 80% correction value in the market, uh, which is historically, again, as we take a look here, the drawings are chart. Apologies, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my upward uh, bound drawing here. You can see here that for the last three major bear markets that we had in crypto, we had a 93% correction, 86% correction, and 84% correction. What you'll notice here is that the bear markets are declining in percentage various variance in this case, right? We had the harshest one back here in about a five month period. Uh, we had a 14 month bear market here, 86%, and a 12 month bear market here from top to bottom. Of so he's highlighting the 80 to 90% drops in Bitcoin after the top. But like the video from earlier from Bitcoin Zay, he said that he doesn't think this is going to happen this time because of the difference of what's going on in the world. With policy with monetary policy and the institutions and big money getting in that won't let it drop that much all right so there's some overviews and targets and some psychological things to keep in mind when we're looking at crypto and when to possibly sell or take profits off the table so let's just take a quick look at bitcoin's price action so we had that drop right about last week to like 47k and then we bounce strong off it and then look at this just exactly like what happened here candle some consolidation then move up candle some consolidation candle some call consolidation then moved up and look at us yesterday we closed above the 50-day sma right there very clean reclaimed it and now moving up again so now our drawings we literally just reclaimed this range from 53k to about 5960k and once you break 5960k and hold above it i'd expect us to go to new highs again all right so there's bitcoin let's look at bitcoin dominance remember this chart that i've been highlighting over and over again look at it the support range that we talked about from like 49 to 50 52 Look at that, we're breaking down from this whole range. We're getting into this bottom range right here. So more money is flowing into altcoins than is flowing into Bitcoin right now. And Ethereum and a lot of the rest of the others can be a key driver. Bitcoin's going up, but its dominance is decreasing, which means everything in the market's doing well. <laughs> the other... Um, coins are outperforming Bitcoin right now. All right, let's look at Ethereum. Look how strong Ethereum is right now. Broke above this range about 25, 2600 right here. 2500 broke out clean right here with strong volume. Strong volume has continued up ever since. All right, so we're looking at the Bitcoin or Ethereum daily chart. 
very bullish. And look at ETH BTC. Yesterday we had that red candle, and then now we're trying to have another green candle. We did all back up. Remember we talked about this, just breaking above resistances and going up. <laughs> look exactly what's happening now. Zoom out. If we can flip this into support, this resistance, and I'd expect further move up on ETH BTC. Sorry about that, I'll be right back. So there's ETH BTC, Ethereum's bullish, Bitcoin dominance is dropping, ETH BTC is bullish. So the altcoins are driving the market right now. We are getting to some concerning range here. So around here, I'd expect some possible rejection, or maybe possible profit taking, but just something to keep in mind. All right, so now let's look at this website right here. So it's called lookintobitcoin.com. So this is a different tool that you can use other than historical price action, um, like what Bitcoin does after the halving and whatnot. This is another weapon that you can use for analyzing when to buy or when to sell Bitcoin. Right, so let's look at it. So this is what Data Dash talked about earlier, the two-year moving average multiple. There's this 200-week moving average heat map, the Puel multiple, stock to flow, which you may hear about a lot, logarithmic growth curves, profitable days. I think we discussed this previously. Um, let's see. And I'll just highlight this one right here. There's so many different ones. I don't really know which to choose, but you just have to look into all of them. Okay, so let's look at this. First one, the one year hot wave, right? So you can notice these red dots right here. These kind of signal the tops. So right here in 2013, when Bitcoin was about 1100, and then this hot wave, one year plus. So this is the amount of Bitcoin that hasn't been moved in a year. So in this example, we are looking at the percentage of all Bitcoins that have not been moved from a wallet for at least a year. So people that are holding for longer term. So right here, the HODL wave was about like 39, 40% at this peak, right? That was in 2013. Look at 2017. When we hit about 20K, right? December 2017, the hot wave was about that same low 40%. And then these greens are the actual bottoms. So when the hot wave goes up to the 50% range or higher, so this is back in December 2018, so the hot wave was about 50%, right? Bitcoin hit 3K. Right here, the bottom in 2015 when Bitcoin was 200 from 1100, the hot wave was about 50%. So literally at these points, these are possible times where you can maximize your entry and your gains to buy at the bottom based on this metric, one year hot wave, right? So that's one target. So what we're looking for now, we're at what? 57K, this thing's off, but we're still at 55% on the hot wave, right? Remember? The previous tops, we we're at low 40s or even high 30s. We're still at 55% right now. So we still got a long ways to go if we base it on this, on selling based on this HODL wave. All right. And here's a two year moving average multiplier. So what this is, is a long term investment tool. It highlights periods where buying or selling Bitcoins would have produced the best returns and it uses a moving average of the two year. All right, so let's look at this. So whenever Bitcoin was below this green line, which is the two year moving average and the red line is a two year moving average times five. I did that. 
to suppress this. Okay, so when it's below this green line, which is a two year moving average, you can see how it's highlighted green, right? That would be a great time to buy. So you could accumulate a Bitcoin from 200 to like $400 here all throughout 2015, right? And then you want to sell when it is above this red line, when it deviates above. That would be a time to start looking to take some profits off the table. And same with 2018, back when it was around 3,000 up to what, 6,000 here, that was a green area where it would be the prime ideal time to buy. And look what happened in 2017, right? We touched this red line, which is the two-year moving average times five. We touched it once right here, touched it twice, three times, and then we finally broke out. So it looks like now we touched it once, maybe twice. We're in the early stages. It hasn't even broke out above yet. So not really looking to take any profits off the table yet based on this historical movement. All right, and here's a 200-week moving average heat map. So what is this? So this indicator um, shows that Bitcoin's price historically bottoms out around the 200 week moving average. So you can see the bottoms, they always line up at this purple line. So if you bought it when it touched this, it'd be a perfect time to buy. But you can see the peaks are always when it's kind of red. So that would be the percentage above the 200 week moving average. So it would be like, what is this, like 15% above this? And this is the monthly 200 week moving average. All right, so right here when it was red, peak in 2013, here's red again, peak in 2017. We're still in this dark green to yellowish, light green range. So we're getting closer to the top, but we're not quite there yet based on this. So you can see it goes to orange and then it will go to red. So we're heating up, we're warming up for sure, but we're not there quite yet. And the Puel multiple. So this metric looks at the supply of Bitcoin miners and the revenue, and it explores market cycles from a mining perspective and then, so they mine, right? And they have to sell to maintain some profit. And then, so Bitcoin miners are sometimes referred to as compulsory sellers due to their need to cover their fixed costs from mining. And of course, the market is extremely volatile. So the revenue they generate can fluctuate over time with price. So the Puel multiple is calculated by dividing the daily Bitcoins mined and released into the world by the 365 day moving average. And so let's look at this. So the top in 2017 or 2013, sorry, 1100 like we were talking about, the Puel multiple got up to about nine right here. Or right? even the first top, because there were two tops in 2013, got above nine or 10, right? So you can see it when it gets in this red range it would be an ideal time to sell. And when it's in this green range, ideal time to buy. So literally, if we want to buy Bitcoin later on down the line after this bull cycle is over, if you're not just dollar cost averaging in, you want to wait until um, this Puel multiple is in this green area. All right. And then 2017, the Puel multiple was around six. And the bottom of this range is around at least four to five. Or yeah, four to ten is this upper bound of this red range, right? Where are we right now? We're still at 2.19. So we still got at least double to get into this range. And then the peak will be somewhere around here. All right, so we still got time. And um, the infamous stock to flow model. So this is based on like fixed supply commodities. So this model treats Bitcoin as being comparable, comparable to commodities such as gold, silver, or platinum. And these are known as store value commodities because they retain value over a long period of time due to their scarcity. What do we talk about all the time? The scarcity of Bitcoin. 21 million total supply, about 18 million is out, about 3 to 4 million is lost forever, and a lot hasn't been moved in years, in the past year, or even five years. Okay, so very scarce supply, 
and increased demand should further drive up the price theoretically. Okay, so it is difficult to significantly increase their supply due to the, the halving of Bitcoin and its algorithmic nature. And it takes into account the mining. So Bitcoin is similar because it is also scarce as the first ever digital scarce asset to exist. There are limited number of existence and it'll take a lot of electricity and computing power to mine the 3 million outstanding coins that we talked about. 18 million out, so we still got 3 million left, right? And stock to flow ratios are used to evaluate the current stock of a commodity against the flow of new production. So the amount that's going to be released. So the stock to the amount of flow, the current stock that's going to be released out. Okay, so for store value commodities like gold, silver, platinum, a high ratio indicates they are not, they are mostly not consumed. Instead, the majority is stored as a hedge thus driving up the stock to flow. And a higher ratio indicates the commodity is increasingly scarce and it's a more valuable store value. All right, so a higher ratio means it's a higher store value, it's more scarce, and it's being stored more off, more so. Okay, so how to analyze this in Bitcoin terms. So the dots on the stock to flow line represent the time until the halving that happens every four years for Bitcoin. And then, um, okay, the colored dots on the price line represent the number of days until the next Bitcoin halving. And this is an event where the reward for mining blocks is halved, so le less than 50% of Bitcoins gets released until the max supply is 21 million, like we talked about. And the stock to flow line incorporates a 365 day moving average. Okay, when price moves above the stock to flow line, the divergence, so above this red line right here. Um, it allows us to easily see how price interacts with stock to flow over time. This was created by Plan B in 2019. Okay, so this is probably the most important or one you see used the most. So you always see tops when there's a deviation above this red line. And this red line is a stock to flow line. All right, and then based on this, the model variance, you'll see it when it gets out of green and into the red and it significantly moves above. So it peaked here about like 1.3-ish. Here it peaked about 1.8. 1.7 but you can see now we're still in the green so we're not at a peak yet and it hasn't deviated above this stock to flow line so when you see a deviation above this and it's like this green yellow that would be that would show the number of days towards the halving um, you could possibly think about taking profits all right so that's all i wanted to highlight today hope you found something useful um, like, comment, subscribe, please, only for educational purposes only. Please share it with whoever you think this would be useful for. But I think these are all very important metrics to help gauge when to possibly take some profits off the table if you ever want to for this exciting asset class and very scarce asset. All right, have a good one. Have a good weekend. Peace.